At this point, I made about 40 long-form videos talking about events and things that happen in the history of professional football. I've talked at length about a lot of different teams, but I've never dug deep into my own team. I've never done a video about the Jacksonville Jaguars. That changes today. October 25th, 2015. Wembley Stadium in London for this AFC matchup between the Buffalo Bills and the Jacksonville Jaguars. For Jacksonville, this has been an incredibly rough season so far. The team had lost four straight games and had gone 1-5 through their first six. Somehow, they're still in the playoff picture, as the AFC South was really bad that season. But they needed to win this game or else their season would be over before their bye week even happened. They needed a spark. And sure enough, they got one. At the start of the second quarter, they were down 3-0 facing a 3rd and 9 on Buffalo's 10-yard line. Less than 7 minutes later, the Jaguars led 27-3. Blake Bortles was looking good. The defense, for one of the few times all season, was playing lights out. EJ Manuel went colorblind and just forgot how to play quarterback for a moment and the Jaguars scored four touchdowns in practically a six-minute stretch. Kicker Jason Myers missed the extra point that would have made it 28-3, which was incredible foresight on his part to know that you never take that lead no matter what. But Buffalo had some momentum going into halftime. A bad breakdown in defensive coverage left Robert Woods wide open for a score, and Dan Carpenter hit a field goal at the end of the half which made it a 27-13 ball game. Buffalo had scored 10 unanswered points going into halftime. Despite this, though, Jacksonville was still in a pretty good spot, all things considered. They were up by two possessions, and they were getting the ball to start the second half. A good drive straight out of the halftime break could have possibly put the game out of reach. Jacksonville had one of the best drives you'll ever see coming out of the half. The clock ticked and ticked and ticked until the team had taken up more than half of the third quarter. Jacksonville moved the ball from their own 20-yard line to Buffalo's six-yard line. And after Buffalo was called for pass interference on a Blake Bortles attempted pass to Julius Thomas, things were looking incredible for the Jags. First and goal at the one yard line. It's almost impossible to mess this up, right? As Aaliyah once said in her hit song from 2000, if at first you don't succeed, just dust yourself off and try again. If you don't succeed on the second time, then maybe the third time's the charm. And if you don't succeed on the third time, the bag except a couple. Except two. Green is up! There's the goal. Gerhardt continues to dig. Pratton meets him and pushes him back. Gerhardt and Alu Alu is the fullback. He is a defensive lineman. Jacobs in motion. Gerhardt is stuffed. This will be the seventh snap inside the 20. Gerhardt. Oh, what a great play! Wrapping him up. Defensive lineman there offers a block. That's where Gerhardt goes. Rambo is there, but Corey Rambo and others with terrific defense. They stopped Gerhardt four times from the one. And Kevin, you got to ask yourself you've got TJ Yeldon. He's got 105 yards rush. Why is he not in there running the football in this situation? Welcome to Dumb Decisions. Now before I break this play down, this whole series is about taking an in-depth look at decisions made during games that were clearly awful from the start. This isn't something that looked bad in hindsight. Rather, this is something that looked awful almost immediately. These are moves where your gut instinct tells you right away that there is no way this can possibly work. And sure enough, your gut instinct was smarter than that of an NFL head coach. And for this one, we're taking a look at the mind of Gus Bradley. What do you say, huh? In my completely unbiased opinion, he's the worst coach in NFL history. I could go on about a two-hour rant about how Gus was terrible, no good, and very bad at his job, but we'll just stick to the sequence of events. Now, if you look at each play by itself and just isolate it, this doesn't seem like a bad call by the Jaguars. This is not video worthy. This just seems like great goal line defense. By itself, there's nothing wrong with running up the middle on first and goal from the one. There's nothing wrong with doing this on second down, or third down, or fourth down. It's the fact that they called the same play on four consecutive tries with the same halfback that makes this decision hilariously awful. So with that out of the way, let's take an in-depth look at why calling the exact same play four times in a row when it didn't work the first three times is probably not a good idea. Let's start with the man who is running the football. 
and that's Toby Gerhardt. Two-yard Toby, as he was known amongst the Jags faithful. After the 2013 season, Jacksonville let Maurice Jones-Drew walk in free agency, as he was not the same halfback after his 2012 injury against the Raiders, and there was some bad blood between him and owner Shad Khan for not giving into his contract demands during a 2012 holdout. So general manager Dave Caldwell decided to address the position in free agency, and he looked at former Vikings halfback Toby Gerhardt. Yeah, this didn't go well. He had just 326 rushing yards on 3.2 yards per carry that season, and because of this, they decided to address the halfback position again in the NFL Draft by taking Alabama halfback TJ Yeldon in the second round in 2015. Yeldon was the primary starter in 2015, with Gerhardt as the backup. And Yeldon was having a fantastic game against the Bills here. He had a 28-yard rushing touchdown in the second quarter. He finished the game with 115 rushing yards and 5.5 yards per carry. Prior to this goal line play, Yeldon had carried the ball 16 times. He had picked up yardage on 14 of those carries. And on that drive, Yeldon had 7 carries and gained yards on all 7 of those runs, averaging 5.8 yards per carry on that drive. Yet Jacksonville decided it would be a good idea to have Toby Gerhardt receive all 4 carries on this one, even though Gerhardt had one carry the entire game. Imagine if the Titans had a goal line situation, and they just decided to take Derrick Henry out of the game for no reason and give it up the middle 4 times to Deion Lewis. That's what this was like. And this is where things get weird. Because you might think that they left Gerhardt in the game because Jacksonville is based on a momentum structure where they don't like alternating halfbacks. There are certain halfbacks where the more carries you give them, the better they become. Yeah, this wasn't the case here. I went through every single game that the Jaguars had up until that point in 2015. And not once could I find a single instance of the team calling four consecutive runs on the same drive with the same halfback. By itself, that's pretty bad. But it gets worse. Because Gus Bradley had been the head coach of the team since the start of the 2013 season. So I went back and I looked at every single game that Gus had ever coached for the team up until that point. Just to see if there was ever an instance where he called four consecutive runs on the same drive with the same halfback. And no breaks in the action like a timeout or a penalty to give the players a bit of a rest. Guess how many times he's done it before. Once. That's it. In a 2014 game against the Colts, the Jaguars called four straight runs with Denard Robinson. On those four runs, Denard picked up at least two yards on each of the attempts, and he picked up 19 yards total. And one of those runs was to the outside. They didn't go up the middle four straight times. This game in London was Gus Bradley's 39th game as the head coach. What he did with Toby Gerhardt was something that he had only literally done once in his entire coaching career. But remember, Toby Gerhardt started his career in Minnesota. Maybe he was built for situations like this where you just have to keep feeding him over and over again. Nope. In his four years with the Vikings, including games where he started over Adrian Peterson due to injury, not once could I find a single instance of Gerhardt receiving four runs in a row. The one time the Jaguars choose to be stubborn and call the same play over and over again, and it's in a practically unprecedented situation with the backup halfback who had done nothing in his two years with the team. But maybe Toby Gerhardt is a good goal line halfback, and this was just a weird coincidence. Nope. On fourth down, Gus Bradley had a choice with what play to call. Do I try something different, or do I give it to Gerhardt again for the fourth straight play? At that point, when it got to fourth and one, here's a look at every single Gerhardt run in his career from the one yard line. He was three for nine. That's not good. This isn't some halfback that was super effective from the goal line and was just stuffed by a great defense. This was a guy who was not good in the slightest bit from goal to go situations. Also keep in mind that up until that point in the season, the most carries that Gerhardt had ever received in a quarter that year was three. Again, he was the backup halfback behind TJ Yeldon. And yet, the Jaguars, who never used Gerhardt more than three times in a quarter, decided to use him on four straight plays. Now, I'm not even going to get into the fact that the game was 27-13, and a field goal on fourth down would have made it a three-possession game. Because let's be honest, you're on the one-yard line, and E.J. Manuel is the quarterback on the other side. I would have gone for it there, too. But to do whatever on earth the Jaguars did was, 
well, nothing short of absolute buffoonery on their part. The Jaguars blew the lead, but eventually won the game because this was the one year where Blake Bortles actually looked like a really good quarterback, and Alan Hearns plays like Jerry Rice whenever he's in London. But that doesn't change the fact that this whole Gerhardt situation was a nightmare. Oh, and that fourth and goal run? Yeah, that was Toby Gerhardt's final ever run in the NFL. What a way to go out. So what did we learn from this situation? Don't call the same play four times in a row if it didn't work the first three times. If your two options in a situation like this are the starting halfback that's playing lights out, or the backup halfback that's been playing like trash, you should probably use the starting halfback. It's not a good idea to try the same thing over and over again with the halfback at the goal line who's not used to situations like this, and who isn't good at the goal line. And it's not a good idea to have Gus Bradley coaching your team. Because when all these elements are in play, it can't exactly be surprised when this play backfires. Talk about a dumb decision. Back except a couple, except two. Green is on There's the goal. Gerhard continues to dig. Prada meets him and pushes him back. Gerhard and Alu Alu is the fullback. He is a defensive lineman. Jacobs in motion. Gerhard is stuffed. This will be the seventh snap inside the 20. Gerhard. Oh, what a great play. Wrapping him up. Defensive lineman there offers a block. That's where Gerhard goes. Rambo is there, but Corey Rambo and others with terrific defense. They stopped Gerhardt four times from the one. And Kevin, you got to ask yourself, you've got TJ Yeldon. He's got 105 yards rush. Why is he not in there running the football in this situation?